Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, and this is the Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications, you'll know exactly when these come out. So corner knives, I've gotten to a point where I absolutely rely on these for every project. They are such a big help to us in our shop, but also, we can get very creative with these. Now, we're just going to scratch the surface here, but I hope it gives you a great idea. So let's start with one, not necessarily creative, but it makes a good point. Before we make that point, let's talk about this because I'm hoping this is going to be some helpful information for us. Because as crafters, the budget, it's always a concern. These can be a little expensive for us. Now, I can't stress this enough, worth every penny. But here's the point. Do we need to buy the full set? Well, we absolutely can, and we're covered on all projects. And at Weaver, we appreciate the business. But here's where I'm going with this. So if we like to work on smaller projects, card cases, card wallets, luggage tags, the smaller sizes are going to work nicely for us, both for outside and inside corners. These are impossible to cut by hand. We could always punch a round hole and then cut out from that, but it's never as clean, and these are so easy to use. Now, if we like the larger projects, for me, journal covers, pouches, saddlebags, well, then the larger knives are going to work better for us. And in fact, I can just tell from the wear on these, the 30 millimeter and the 25, those are the two that I use the most. But a really good point with these, if we've got an overlay, we're going to drop that on top of our main body. We're going to put a pouch on top of that. With these tools, we can cut proportional corners. How good does that look? Now, it's not absolutely perfect because right here, that's our 40 millimeter, 30 millimeter, and then 25. So not perfect, but to me, that looks good. I love adding the decorative corners to my projects. That looks so good to me, but it works on so many different types of projects. But I've always been a little hesitant to add these simply because making this inside cut by hand and making it look good, virtually impossible. But with our corner knives, these are now fast, clean, easy, and consistent. Right here, well, there's our smallest little bitty thing, isn't it? So I've used our 4.5 millimeter, our 9 millimeter, and our 15 millimeter corner knife. But that is just one cute little corner, isn't it? Well, here's two standard sizes, but how about we mix it up a little bit? Instead of just three cuts, how about right here, we're going to use our 40 millimeter, our 9 millimeter, but let's don't forget, we're also doing our round corner on our, our corner there. That's a 15 millimeter. But again, let's step it up a little bit. Maybe we get a little more creative. Let's add two smaller and three largers. In fact, right there, we've got the 30, 9, 30, 9, and 30. And then right down here, the 15 for that corner. Now, I would say with these, let's create a little template. Let's trace this in and then use our knife. Makes it so easy, so clean. And again, they're all very consistent. I don't do a lot of scalloped edges. I think they're beautiful, but I don't have a lot of projects where these are going to work in. But there is one great example, and we've got to look at this. All right, say a pair of chaps. So we've got our main body for our chaps. We've got our veg tan piece. We've tooled, we've stamped, we dyed. How about we add in an additional color there? Let's do this. Let's scallop this edge. So I'm going to go with our 9 millimeter. Let's just see if we can good, get a good scallop all the way around. Now, I should have mentioned this earlier, but if you're new to the corner knives, these are knives, and they're not punches. They're not drive punches. We don't need a mallet on these. But what I would suggest, let's get a good surface behind these, like our poly or our poundo board, to where our knife can go through the leather and into this material. That's going to give us our best cut, but also it's going to keep us from trashing our blade. So let's just see if we can do a good scallop on this. And one more. Actually, that looks pretty good and pretty easy to do. Let's lay this in. That is a nice touch. That's going to look good on a project. Well, we talk about scalloping, absolutely. But how about the outside edge of a project? Maybe, say, a pouch flap. Mix it up with whatever tools we have. Well, of course, we've got to take that a step further. Let's add in spots. 
I like the look of that border. Now, we've talked about outside edges. How about inside edges? Because if we're dealing with reptile, real, well, it can be tough. It doesn't always sew as nice as we'd like it. Plus, it's a thinner leather, so I'm worried that it's going to tear. We can always drop in an overlay on that. Yeah, there we go. Or even a different colored leather. That would look nice. And again, we can get a little creative with that. Okay, now we're going to step it up and really get creative with these. There are so many ways these knives will help us out that we never really think of. Something as simple as an oval. That is tough to cut by hand, super easy to do with our knives. In fact, that's a 40 on the long sides and a 15 millimeter on the ends. Actually, that'd make a great maker's mark. We could drop our mark right there, two rivets. That would look good. But also, think of all the ways we can combine these tools to make a very cool badge. We can make something totally unique. All right, so right here, we're going to look at the outcome. Then let's step back and look at the template. So I've got my leather marked in four places. I'm going to start with our 40, 40 millimeter knife, and I'm just going to meet my points. Okay, we've got those four cuts. Now let's step down to our 9mm and finish this out. And our last cut. How cool is that? That's kind of a neat design. Again, I'm not sure where to put this, but I'm looking for the perfect project for that. Well, here's how we're going to do that. Let's just make a small template. Let's measure everything out. So right here, I'm using the 40 millimeter and the 9 millimeter, and we can just simply make four marks. That way, we can hit those marks with our, with our larger tool and then just come in and clip those out. That is cool. But also, how about a ribbon? Let's simply make a ribbon. And let's just trim that end off, see what we've got here. Well, I didn't measure that, but actually that looks pretty clean, pretty consistent. So many possibilities. Could we do a larger rope design? How about a Celtic knot? I have no idea. I haven't been there yet, but again, we're just scratching the surface. So many possibilities. How about on a billet or a strap? We want to add a nice end decoration. One and a half inch strap going with my 40. What I'm going to do there we go. I'm gonna, I've got a mark right in the center of my strap, one and a half inch. I'm going to do my best to hit that, and I'm going to bring the edge of that tool right to the edge of the leather. Good. Let's do that on the other side. And now let's reverse that tool and come down to our edge. Clean, consistent, and easy. That looks good. There are so many ways. These will help us in our shop, but the creativity, oh, unlimited possibilities. One of the things I love about Leathercraft is the fact that we can take the most mundane of tools and do the most creative things with it. I hope there's something here that you love that's absolutely going to set your projects apart. But at the same time, pick up a couple of tools, a little scrap, who knows what's going to happen. I hope this is good information for you. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.